Hi, hi, Jeffrey Sachs. Uh, I'm distinguished par participants. I'm really glad to be with you today. Um, so I, I prepared a very short presentation to set the scene and explain a little bit where we are today uh, in the in extending social protection for all. So this presentation is entitled "Investing More and Better in Universal Social Protection." Yeah. So, so the first, uh, if you can go to the next slide, I will start explaining a little bit what do we know today, uh, and then move to the other parts. What do we want, and how to to move forward? So, uh, next slide, please. So, what do we know first is that, of course, social protection is a human right. It's recognized by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in two articles, Article 22 and Article 25. Article 22 recognizes the right to social security. And interestingly, it also recognizes the responsibility of national effort and international cooperation to realize this right. Article 25 lists a number of risks that we call at the ILO the contingencies that, are, uh, that, that really form the branches of social security, uh, all these different areas um, of contingencies and risks that you need to be protected from uh, across your life, such as unemployment, um, old age, disability, uh, access to healthcare, family benefits, etc. Next slide. So social protection is also uh, an economic necessity. This graph illustrates the correlation between social protection uh, expenditure and the reduction of poverty. So social protection clearly reduces poverty and uh, quite immediately. Uh, we, saw that we see that as soon as a person uh, receive cash transfers, uh, income security, they are actually, um, uh, they, they, this can remove them from poverty. It also prevents poverty um, uh, through the same uh, mechanisms. Uh, social transfers are also uh, used by governments to redistribute uh, income and wealth and uh, across society. And as a result, they're also very effective in tackling inequality. Um, and uh, what is also interesting, and this is why uh, social protection is part of several uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, is that social protection contributes also to many other development objectives, such as access to education, access to care, green transition, and many others. Uh, next slide, please. So despite the fact that it's a right, that it's an economic necessity and a development um, uh, catalyzer, um, social protection is not yet a reality for 4 billion people. So still more than half of the world's population has no access to any social protection benefits. And at the ILO, we estimate that uh, less than 47% of the world's population has access to at least one social protection benefit. It can be access to health care or it can be old age pension. But among these 47%, the large majority doesn't have access to what we call comprehensive social protection, which is social protection across your life. So they may have access to one type of benefit, but not uh, throughout their lives. So this is obviously not the world that we want. Next slide, please. And then COVID-19 has been a very, uh, I mean, a tragic moment of our history, but also a huge wake up call. Uh, for social protection. Most countries in the world have established emergency social protection benefits that cover, uh, that provided uh, cash transfers or access to healthcare to people for a temporary period. Um, and um, but they have realized that this is not enough, these emergency benefits are not enough to build a systemic and sustainable social protection system. Now that we are entering the recovery, um, the recovery from the crisis, we, we see that there is a two-track recovery happening, and therefore there is a huge risk of divergence between uh, especially uh, developed countries and less advanced countries. And therefore there is a need, a call for global solidarity to, to ensure that uh, this divide uh, doesn't take place. Next, next slide, please. What do we want? So first, uh, next slide, we want universal social protection. Universal social protection is defined by the ILO recommendation on social protection floors that was adopted by all ILO member states in 2012. It's about ensuring that all residents have access to health care and that all children have access to income security. This means that they can go to school, have proper nutrition, education, etc. 
all people in working age have also access to income security. For instance, if they are unemployed, they should have unemployment benefits. If they are uh, about to deliver, they should have a maternity benefits, etc. And all older persons should have also income security, which means uh, mainly uh, pensions. Uh, so universal, it means everybody is covered. It also means everybody is covered across the life. So it's comprehensive. It means that you have social protection not only when you are old or when you are a child or when you are a mother, but across your life. So it means you need to be protected against different risks. Universal, it also means that the social protection system has to be solid, has to be sustainable, because if a social protection system is not sustainable, they cannot, of course, protect people. So sustainable, um, universal means many different things. Next slide, please. And uh, we know that uh, universal social protection is possible, and the best testimony is that many developing countries have achieved universal social protection for at least uh, one or two uh, guarantees, uh, such as old age, health, uh, unemployment, etc. Next slide, please. However, we have discussed that uh, several times with Jeffrey Sachs. Um, in, to achieve universal social protection, you, we need to invest much more in social protection. We have estimated uh, um, that uh, actually today there is a huge financing gap for social protection and that low and middle income countries should, in, should invest an additional 3.8% of their GDP. This is an average, but when you look at low income countries, actually the investment is much higher in percentage of GDP, it's around 15.9%. So this means that uh, more investment have to be done at national level by, uh, by the governments. Um, there are many ways to increase the domestic resources for social protection through tax reforms, for extending social security to the informal economy. There are many, I mean, we know all these menus of possibilities, but it's, uh, there is a lack often of political will. And there is also a window of opportunity at the international level. And this has changed, I think, thanks to the COVID crisis. Today, we see a number of initiatives. Um, for instance, uh, lately, um, the IMF has announced that they they will um, agree to a new SDR allocations that could be used not only by uh, those who have uh, the most SDR rights, which are developed countries, but also by low income countries uh, for a sort of SDR swap uh, to, to, to support the recovery, including uh, access to universal social protection. Uh, next slide, please. So what's next? Next slide. First, what's next is that um, there, there has been um, in June 2021, so a few months ago, an international labor conference. It's every year we have an international labor conference at the IO, and this year uh, it was the recurrent discussion on social security. And our uh, 187 member states have adopted a number of conclusions. Uh, they really um, where they, they really recognize the need to build universal social protection systems and uh, the need for a greater so global solidarity uh, in the form of a sort of global funds that we have discussed several times also with Jeffrey Sachs to overcome a coverage and financing gap. And they have even asked uh, our office, so <laughs> and um, our team, to explore uh, the design and implementation of a global financing mechanism. At the same time, the UN Secretary General uh, has uh, recently launched a, a report com, uh, called Our Common Agenda, where he recognizes the need uh, for universal social protection systems and again, a global fund to close the financing gaps. And uh, uh, five days ago, on 28th of September, the UNSG, together with, uh, with the support from the ILO and many uh, other agencies, has launched a global accelerator for jobs and social protection that will really uh, support countries uh, in achieving universal social protection by 2030. Um, so uh, uh, myself, I'm responsible for a global program at the ILO, which is a sort of accelerator as well of universal social protection. And uh, so we are now uh, looking at the design of, uh, of this new uh, mechanism that will uh, link um, development cooperation, so support mm -hmm. building their social protection systems and the finance back, ensuring that first they can uh, mobilize more domestic resources and second, that they can also count on more ODA support and uh, these SDR swaps. So next slide. 
so it's timely. I, I mean, our meeting of today is timely because in three, four days on the 7th of October, we will launch the second phase of our flagship program, which is uh, an accelerator for USP, Universal Social Protection. And I will maybe uh, share with those who are interested the information on that meeting that will give you the opportunity to learn more about what we do uh, on Universal Social Protection and how we can move forward together. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.